Hello, my name's Darren Batterby and I work for Snap-on Diagnostics and I'm going to talk to you today about EOBD and Mode 2. What you'll see how an ECU works, um, you, we have what we call a back door and a front door and you'll see on the, on the picture behind me, um, back door diagnostics is what we call where we plug in through our diagnostic link connector we plug our scan tool into this and we read serial data. So processed information is what we're reading through the scan tool. Uh, we class the uh, front door is from the sensors from under the bonnet. You know, it comes in via, via the sensor through to the ECU, through the front door, and it comes through and into the ECU. So, you know, this is what we class as our live data rather than processed information. So what you've got to think about is how is a treble code set? You know, it's like a um, row of dominoes. You know, if you think of 100 dominoes, 40 to 60 has fell down. The technician, in reality, has got to find the initial cause what has made the fault code log. So if we, if we take our dominoes, 40 to 60 has fell down. Is it 40 and they've tumbled to the right? Is it 60 they've tumbled to the left? Or is it 50 and they've gone right and left? We've got to get to that initial cause. So a trouble code is only a guide. Problems that we have which does not set a trouble code, a direct trouble code, could be engine condition, could be fuel pressure, it could be fuel flow. You could be looking at ignition faults, um, faults that don't meet their enabling criteria. And what I mean by their enabling criteria is every sensor on that engine has a maximum and minimum threshold that it works within. So on the screen at the moment, you can see that we have a trouble code. We have a DTC area, which is a maximum and minimum area. And if you follow the line that's coming across the screen, it's actually there. That's how a sensor should work. Okay, so at that point, it's working within its enabling criteria. If you've got a vehicle that is running incorrectly, you know, maybe hunting, maybe misfiring, you know, what you might find is the fault code itself does not post until it cracks that enabling criteria for the ECU to say, you've gone out of your parameters, I'm now going to put the light on and log this fault code. So that's how a fault code is set. You may find, <coughs> which is on the screen at the moment, that you've got a vehicle, it's hunting, you might find you've got a problem, you know there's a running problem as a technician, but because when you log on with your scan tool you get no codes found, what you'll find here is that it's working within its set parameters and hasn't broken that enabling criteria to be able to post a fault code. So again, no trouble fault code found. And these are the worst ones for a diagnostic purpose that to fix. So. Why am I talking to you today about um, EOBD? Well, you know, as a technician, we always go for the guide, and the guide is looking for the fault code, but as I said previous, we have no code. So where does the technician go next? Technician will then look at live data. He'll sit there, he'll review the live data, digital data, graph and data, whichever form he has available to him, and he'll spend the time looking at that live data. Well, at this point then, what happens if you still find no problem? Where do you go next? As a technician, do you start to guess? You know, um, I'm a firm believer in test and don't guess, so let's go and have a look at mode two on EOBD, what that can do for you as well. So, what's the difference between OEM and EOBD? Why would you say, or why do I stand here and say to you today, Go and use EOBD because the ECU handles the data differently. For engine management emission problems, you know, that's where EOBD comes into its strength. So I would always say look in both rooms. You've got an OEM room and you've got an EOBD room. And as you can see on the screen at the moment, we have both of these. This ECU is now split into two. So if you take where I've got this line across the middle, it's a brick wall within that ECU. So the OEM room, whatever information that's a given us, it won't allow the EOBD side of the ECU to read it. If whatever the EOBD side is reading, that then doesn't tell 
the OEM room. You know, so they're, they're totally two, if you like, two separate ECUs within one. It still has our front door information coming in and it still has our back door processed information coming out. But the protocols are different, so we have different routes into that ECU to read both sides of those. So what do we have in, in, in the 10 modes of EOBD? So just as a brief, service mode one is live data and system monitors. So again, it's where every technician go to look at their live data. Mode two, I'm going to talk about in a moment, is freeze frame data. So we're going to come back to that. Mode three, read diagnostic trouble codes. Again, you know, that's where you see whether there's any fault codes to look for that guide. Mode four is clear diagnostic trouble codes. Mode six, seven and eight, uh, onboard monitor tests. You've got pendant diagnostic trouble codes, request control of onboard system. Mode nine is request vehicle information. So the VIN number and ECU calibration numbers are in this mode here. And mode 10, because that's what we have there now, is permanent fault codes. So this is what's actually putting the light on at this specific moment. So if you have a fault code in mode 10, then the light is being illuminated by that fault code. So at least you know where you're heading for diagnosis. On the screen, you'll see where whenever I talk to customers, our customers is modes one, modes three and modes four is only the places that if they've ever looked in EOBD, that's the only modes that they have ever used. Live data, trouble codes, and deleting the trouble code. So why, uh, we've got a vehicle, intermittent check engine lights coming on, it's got a drivability problem, but when the vehicle comes in, trouble code's not there anymore. What do you do? As I said, we look at the trouble code, it's not there. You look at live data, there's nothing there. And that's where mode two comes in on EOBD. It's like a camera taking a photograph of when that fault code was posted. It's like a camera taking a picture of the ECU and the live data at that point in time. So what does it do? It stores one frame of live data at the time the last confirmed or pending code mode seven trouble code is stored. This frame can be key factor in determining the cause and effect relationship which triggered the trouble code. So, you know, it could be a key factor to find in your fault. Freeze frame is very, very useful. However, you, you know, you need to be aware of some of the following. And what that following is, is freeze frame is stored when the trouble code is stored, not necessarily when the problem began. So if you imagine a circuit fault, it takes usually five seconds to store a trouble code. If it's a misfire, then that's evaluated every thousand revs, and a misfire DTC may take up to 60 or 90 seconds to post a code after the initial problem. So you just need to be aware of those. So as I said, freeze frame data is the car's ability to capture one frame of data of when the fault code was posted. You never make that final diagnosis without having a look at freeze frame data. For intermittent faults, it's the place to go and have a look on engine management issues, because it may well help you out.